welcome back to one of my monthly mommy favorites videos where I share some of my favorite um, products and even a website or two that I've just been enjoying as a mama over the past month. So this is going to reflect my daughter's fourth month, so four to five months, that age range, um, and sort of the standout things for us during this, this time. If you'd like to see some of my previous favorites um, in the mommy category, I will have my pl baby playlist linked for you guys below uh, if you want to see all of my baby videos, which now there are quite a few. They are accumulating quickly. Anyway, uh, I thought I'd talk about a few clothing kind of things this, this month because I haven't talked about them in a while. Uh, and something that's been a favorite of mine since Charlotte was born, really, uh, have been the main message baby bows. Um, I have loved main message hair ties for myself for years. I am just... They just work so well on my hair. I have super fine hair. It's very prone to breakage and I have to be very delicate with them. And it's just, they're those elastic kinds of, um, that are hand tied. And the owner of the company, Olivia, has just been really kind to me over the years and we've, you know, been talking for years back and forth. And, and uh, she launched Baby Bows, um, just kind of coincidentally around the same time that I had my baby and I have just loved them ever since. They are nylon elastic, so they're not a traditional elastic. It's not elastic at all. I don't know why I said elastic. It's nylon. So basically what it, nylons are is what tights are made out of. And actually the nylon elastic are made from tights from what I understand. You just cut tights and it rolls up into this nice soft thing. The great thing about the nylon is that it does not leave a dent in your baby's head. Baby's heads are very soft. Um, and some headbands can be a little like hard to wear. They're super soft. Charlotte doesn't even realize she has this on, as far as I can tell. Does not leave a mark on her head. Um, and they grow with the baby, so they're good for a number of years. Charlotte also has a few bows that I love that are beautiful from an Etsy shop called Princess Ava's Boutique that are um, traditional elastic. And they're just so big on her. She's got a, like a kind of smaller head like me, a bit of a petite head. Um, and uh, they even like the smaller size, like you buy those by age range. And they just, they just don't stay put on her head. Whereas these have fit her since she was teensy tiny. They still fit her. They're still comfortable. They're not over, over whelming on her head. I like that they're teensy tiny bows too because I kind of think it looks cute and have a little petite bow. She also has the bigger bow option now which we just bought a whole bunch of because I just think they're gorgeous and they're not super super big. They still look really nice on her head but she's gonna be able to wear these for a long time because they stretch out so much and they're so soft and they're just wonderful so I thought I should mention them. I love her for summer. She did Liberty Fabrics, Liberty of London Fabrics so cute and precious and awesome and lovely and you should go check them out because they're amazing um so i will link her and all the products below but i'll link her website below another thing that we've been into lately is i discovered mini bowden uh, which is a i believe a uk based brand of children's clothing they have an adult store called bowden which i actually bought a maxi dress from which i haven't worn yet it's reminding me to wear that i should wear that now that it's hot it's kind of like dress weather. Anyway, uh, I, I love, love, love their, I think they're called the dungarees. That's what they call them. They're like little cloth over the overalls. So super cute. This is the 6 to 12 month size. Um, I like that they have two buttons so they, you can make them a little bit longer straps or shorter straps. Um, they're still a little bit long. Uh, Charlotte's got a very long torso and just kind of like average length legs as far as I can tell. So they're still just a teensy bit long in the legs. But they're super cute. I throw on a little white onesie underneath. Long sleeve if it's cool. Short sleeve if it's warmer. Um, and they're just so cute. And look at the, I mean I love these with the little mice on them. You'd think some other brand brands would um, not put the full patch on because the mice, you know, come in and out of the pockets. No, if you look down in the pocket, the whole mouse is there. Like, even though you can't see that part. I love that. The whole mouse. I love that. So anyway, um, I've really been enjoying this brand. I bought a couple other summery kind of two-piece sets from them that I haven't I just hasn't had an occasion to use yet, but um, we have a lot of family stuff this summer and a lot of things where I kind of wanted to look kind of cuter than normal. Usually every day I just put her in a onesie and then if we go out I throw some pants and socks on her. Um, but at home she's usually just in like a bodysuit. Um, but I love these sorts of things when we're going to do something, you know, or see people. And I want her to, you know, 
be super cute. Anyway, um, so those are some of our favorite clothing and accessory items from the past month. Uh, a couple of toy favorites. Charlotte really, really got into toys this past month. Like she's around her third month is when she really started being able to interact with them more. And around her fourth month is when she started to really be able to consciously and intentionally play with toys. And two of her favorites from the four to five month mark have been these rattles. So this is the Manhattan, I don't know the exact name of it, but I'll have it linked for you guys below. It's a Manhattan toy rattle. This is probably your all time favorite toy right now and it has been for the past month. Um, it's just so easy for her to grab. It's really, really um, flexible and soft. So when she, she, I mean, she's really into shaking the rattles now. So when she hits herself in the face, it doesn't hurt. Um, and it's easy for her to put in her mouth. And she has started teething over this past month. So this has been really nice for her. And she always grabs for it on the play mat. Um, it's how I've <laughs> enticed her to stay in tummy time. It's always have this in front of her. So she reaches forward for it when she's in tummy time. And then she kind of gums on it and she's a little bit happier in tummy time. Although now she's figured out how to roll over and I can't get her to stay in tummy time to save my life. So <laughs> don't know what to do about that, but we'll figure something else out. Anyway, this other one was actually a recommendation. I follow a blogger friend of mine, Veronica. Her, her blog, Veronica's Blushing, is just wonderful style blog, but she also does family stuff too. And follow her on Snapchat and she had talked about this toy. Can you see it changing colors? That um, her baby, who I believe is like seven or eight months old now, I, I can't, I think it's seven. Lincoln, he's so super cute. Um, he loves this and she highly recommended it, so I went for it. It's a little bit expensive, it's about 20 bucks, but I think it's because it, you know, it, it lights up, like it changes colors, um, it lights up. That's part of the appeal of it. It also has been very easy for Charlotte to really like experience because it's got kind of that bold, um, patterning on it that really stands out. Um, this really tactile nubby part on the handle so she can really grab it. It's got a mirror on the bottom. It's got the little ears. She likes to kind of gum on the little ears and it changes color. And of course it rattles as well. So those have been um, hits in the toy department over the past month. I did also want to talk about my um, a few things I'm not actually gonna hold up here because I felt, a, I don't know, I felt a little bit awkward holding up like a breast pump. I guess I shouldn't, I'll pop in a picture. I don't know, it just seems kind of like personal, but I wanted to talk about my breast pump and accessories that I like so much because I get a lot of questions about this. I didn't really start pumping on the daily until this past month, so until Charlotte turned four months old because we, you know, battled with thrush for so long and I knew I couldn't save any of that milk. When you have thrush, the yeast can live on <laughs> um, in a variety of temperatures and circumstances. And even if you're freezing breast milk, I just, I didn't want to, it was just a waste of time. And plus I don't bottle feed her ever. Um, she actually doesn't like bottle feeding. I, um, over the past month have been pumping every evening and I do this at the end of the day, sort of as like, a couple of hours after she goes to sleep, right before I go to sleep, as sort of the last milk of the day. So it's not a lot. I, I probably only pump about two ounces at the end of the day every day. Um, but I do this to A, kind of help with my um, breastfeeding and my supply and stuff and just to keep things even as she's been transitioning and dropping feedings. Um, just to keep that kind of, you know, to help me with avoiding engorgement and, and plug ducts and things like that, but also to have a bit of a freezer stash um, for A, mostly to have for emergencies. So in the event that something happened to me or I couldn't feed Charlotte, that I know that she has a supply of my milk in the fridge, in the freezer that she can have. Um, so you never know if you're gonna be hurt or you know, something could happen, so it's good to have it. And it really, I mean, only takes, you know, like 20 minutes a day or so. Um, but also, when we start solids, and we haven't yet, we, we are going to um, very soon, when we start solids, it'd be nice to have a little bit of breast milk to, um, you know, to uh, mix in with pureed things to kind of thin them out, like carrots and, you know, whatever veggies and things you're gonna make. Um, it's nice to have that on hand. But honestly, I have it primarily for, a, for an emergency stash and also to just kind of help even out my, uh, my supply and my my day of breastfeeding. So anyway, 
long story short, the breast pump that I have, and I can't attest to how it works better or less well in regards to other pumps because it's the only one I've ever had, but it's the Spectra Baby USA S2 double or single breast pump. So you can convert to a double. I have it set up as a single. Honestly, I should set it up as a double because I do pump both sides at the end of the day, kind of like empty out for the day. Um, for me, it's worked great. I haven't had any complaints with it. It's easy to use. It feels comfortable and it's pretty quiet. Um, I, again, I don't have experience with other pumps to compare it to, but it's, you know, it's just, it's easy and it works and it's a good machine. And I did a lot of research on those to kind of looking at the different re user reviews I always rely heavily on when buying things that I don't know anything about. Um, and that one got great reviews, so I'm, I'm really happy with it. Um, I also use, because I freeze my breast milk, so I freeze it right away after pumping. Um, I'll go downstairs and I'll put the milk that I've expressed into a Lanaso breast milk storage bag. Those are the ones I use. Um, I should have brought those up. I don't know why I felt weird bringing the breast milk storage bags up. I don't know, I'll keep popping in pictures, anyway. These are great, they hold way more milk than I ever produce at the end of the day, but um, they're perfect. I like that I can freeze them flat. Um, so I put the milk in, you know, I close it up, I label it, it has a place to label, like the date, the time, the how many ounces, etc. I lie it flat and freeze it in our, like our big freezer in the basement that's just a freezer, so it doesn't get a lot of use. So when you're freezing breast milk for long-term storage, you want it to be in the back of a freezer or in a freezer that, you know, like a deep freezer or whatever, something that doesn't get opened a lot and, and, and maintains its temperature. So that's a great place for it. Um, and so I freeze them flat and when once they're frozen, I just happened to have these containers on hand. One day I was like, you know, I have all these stacks of breast milk. I'd like to put them in a container. Um, and I was rooting through my container collection and I found this one from Tell Fresh. Now hold on, I wrote it down. It's the Tell Fresh food storage container. I believe it's a 3.2 quart size. I will make sure of that and I will correct myself if I'm wrong. But it is exactly the perfect size to stack, uh, to vertically stack the Lanaso um, breast milk storage packs in and I can fit a month in one container standing up so I have them you know chronologically that way and if, if it's perfect I can put the lid on and everything and they're just standing up I'll pop in a picture or some footage I don't know what of, of how that looks so I'm gonna go buy another one because I have all of May now and now I we're almost through June here, so I need another container to put June in, but um, that just kind of helps keep things organized and together and not kind of flying around the freezer all by itself. Um, but I just thought it, that was just such a coincidence that I had that on hand and it worked perfectly. So those are kind of my pumping favorites, and, and I have been pumping every day for the past about six weeks or so, like I said, so uh, seven or eight weeks now, actually, um, and it's been working out. So I thought I would mention that because I get a lot of questions. And then last but not least, a website. I came across this actually on Facebook of all places. One of the, my friends on Facebook um, often posts links to this blog. It's like a, a collection of bloggers, that kind of blog. It's called scarymommy.com. I haven't spent a ton of time reading it, but I do enjoy checking it out from time to time. It's sort of a tongue-in-cheek mommy blogger blog. Um, so they talk about mommy topics, you know, children, parenting, all that stuff. But it's very, um, kind of got a sarcastic tone. It's supposed to be sort of witty and, um, and just kind of funny for the most part. Um, they do talk about serious things as well, but um, it's definitely a, a bit more tongue in cheek and I kind of like that. And it's a bit of a departure. I mean, there's so many mommy bloggers out there and a lot of it's very serious you know, very factual, very serious, or very emotional, or, you know, there's a wide range of things, but, and they can all be great for different purposes, but it's nice to kind of see, see a blogging, mommy blogging website that's a bit more um, geared towards humor, because um, there's a lot of humor in being a parent. I mean, there's a lot of seriousness too, but you gotta, you gotta laugh, you gotta laugh at the funny moments. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that because I've been enjoying looking at it from time to time. So those are my mommy favorites this month. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'd love to hear what some of your mommy favorites are if you care to share. Check back very, very soon for my diaper bag video. I'm going to have it up in the next, I'm not going to say when, but by the end of the month for sure. So I will have that for you for 
everybody who's been asking and asking, yes, I'm finally posting that. And you'll see a lot of my favorites in that because obviously if it's in your diaper bag, it's probably a favorite. Um, but uh, I'd love to know if you have any mommy favorites of your own that you'd like to share, things that you're loving for children of any age, not necessarily the age of, of my daughter, but uh, yeah, please share if you care. And I will see you guys real soon. Thanks for watching, you guys. Take care. Bye.